it was love at first sight. Yeah. Yeah. Not with the dancing, but with the drag. It took, what, 33 years of my life to really fully embrace the fact that I'm a wonderful human being and I deserve love. And I'm sorry it's about me, 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 me. And you've written a book about yourself. <laughs> we have to talk about you. you <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I wanted to start where dancing started for you, mm -hmm. and I wanted to know where you first discovered ballroom. It was a fluke, darling. Um, how do I paint this picture for you, Holly? I, I, I remember coming back from school and I was looking for my friends to hang out with, and I was just told that they're all going to this recreation center in the township. And there I was, off to this township, to look for my friends. And that is when I stumbled across a group of kids trying out dance moves. The whole concept of it was that they wanted to gather us in one place and just make sure that we were not roaming the streets for no reason. I remember they said, we've got a dance style to demonstrate for you guys um, and we would like you to be a part of it. And off they went and got into their regalia and they came out in their costumes. I, I still say today it was never about the dancing for me because when I laid my eyes on that tailcoat, I was like, how do I get that sparkling tailcoat on me? <laughs> do you know? That was my question to him. And he just said to me, if you, if, you, if you stick around, you'll eventually get to wear this tailcoat. And let mm -hmm. me tell you something. I never looked back. It was love at first sight. Yeah. Yeah. Not with the dancing, but with the drag. <laughs> <laughs> You left your family at 13, was it? Yes. So kind of really basically pursue dance. Dance. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I have got Auntie Martha to thank for convincing my mum to let me go and pursue my dream, you know, and get out of Zamdela and get out of, you know, that small town thinking and ways and go and spread my wings. What was the environment like that you were kind of like, thrown into <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it, it, that that was quite interesting like I always say you know moving from a township to another township especially where you know the demographic was different you know I lived amongst you know in the correct term would say mixed race township um, uh, and, and, and I left and I left so to speak a black township to and and, and, and it was it was just it was just a different way of, of, of life. Because I was, I was, for lack of a better word, unique, you know, I, I was ostracized at the mm. high school. And, and, and those were my formative years. And that is why it was so hard. I mean, I mean school in Ennerdale was, was difficult. What sort of bullying were you dealing with? <sighs> I'll take you to one incident when, in my first couple of days at school, actually, when I went to the boys' restrooms um, and I was met by a couple of gents who were obviously banking classes. It was a matter of like, what are you doing in here kind of a thing. You know, it felt like I was invading their, their space as if I didn't belong there. Mm -hmm. And when he said to me, <laughs> what did you say as if I had said anything, you know? It escalated to when they took me to the to the cubicle and dunked me in a toilet seat. Thank goodness there was nothing else in there. Mm. Just terrible smell. And obviously, don't know if I can say there's piss. So there I was covered in piss, you know, as early as 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah, it just, it, it leaves one thinking there's absolutely something wrong with you. Mm. And I hated that. Yeah. yeah. You, you wrote in the book that over time you felt like maybe you deserved it, yeah. which is a, a just truly awful <laughs> feeling to have. <laughs> I guess, I, I guess you know, that's the thing. That's the thing when you deal with, 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 with such things. I think, I think if, if it's been happening to you for such a long time, you start, you start to think that you deserve it. But also mm. it was internalised. There was a lot of shame that was attached to that because yeah. it was in that time as well as a teenager when I was like, what is wrong with me? Why am I feeling this way? Why do I have these feelings? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 
and you have everybody around you telling you, oh, it's wrong, it's not very Christian-like, you know, the values that one grew up with, it's those kind of things that puts pressure on one. Do you feel like you're at a point now where you're able to comfort that? Oh, child? honey, oh, honey, I've healed. Oh, it's been a long road and I'm still healing, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, and I always say it took, what, 33 years of my life to really fully embrace the fact that I'm a wonderful human being and I deserve love. Yeah. Yeah. Took me a while. You made it onto Strictly South Africa. Obviously, you know, we've, we've jumped a lot there. We've jumped uh -huh. a lot of trials and tribulations. Uh -huh. We've jumped a lot of uh, time on, on cruise ships performing. And so when you got, got that that position on Strictly South mm. Africa. What was that first year like? What was that whirlwind of of a, like a different life experience? The excitement around that was that for seven years, I've used to watch it on TV with my mom every time I was back home for holidays. And I would look at everybody and and judge. <laughs> oh, that one could have done something better. Oh, da, 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 da. And my mom, I remember my mom one day saying, can you please shut up? <laughs> we just want to enjoy the program. And if you really are that concerned, why are you not there? So to have had an opportunity to go in and audition and walk out of Rapid Blue Studios under the leadership of Killeen Ivan, who I think is is a wonderful once again, a woman, a beautiful woman, and that has really brought about change within the television industry. She called me right up as I was working and said, listen, you've got that job, you're in. And I remember the first thing I did was call mom and say, um, hi. <laughs> <laughs> guess, guess who's back in the house? And, 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 and I remember it was just that thing. It was just a feeling of having to have achieved something out of this whole dancing thing, so to speak, you know, yeah. for the, because for the first time I felt like, you know, my peers will, 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 will get to see me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I found myself in a place where people would walk up to me and say, oh my gosh, like, yo, you're that dancer guy. You yeah. know, and I, this is like from straight, so to speak, gents, people that I would never even make time for just mm. because of my lived experiences you understand what i'm saying and how if they didn't know that that's what i did i was just treated differently mm. you know so that is what television did for me in that short space of time yeah there's some, the respect the respect <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of a thing yeah and 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 and, and, and i and, and i thrived in it because I made, I, I, I made beautiful friendships on the shows and I learned so much about myself yeah. as well. And so some years later, you get the call that you're, that you're, you're wanted for Strictly UK. As a result to being in the West End and being discovered there, the phone call came after three years. You know, um, three years <laughs> is over, a long time to be waiting. You know, to know that you're on, on Strictly Come Dancing yeah. radar yeah. and then hear nothing for three years. I was just like, oh, it's fine. Mm. But then it did come, that phone call, and it did change my life. I somehow just knew in my heart that this is also where I belonged. Yeah. Does does London feel like home now? The UK feels like home. <laughs> You're like, not committing to <laughs> London. <laughs> Listen, the UK feels like home. And just because I've had the opportunity to, to go around the country and yeah. see its beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I feel like I feel like you're the you're, you're the dream, not even London centric <laughs> like some of us. <laughs> oh, then you've got some beautiful places like Tor <laughs> like Torquay with your Spanish coastline. I'm like, is this the United Kingdom? <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And so, Strictly in the UK has, um, I think, pushed you out of your comfort zone in many ways, but allowed you to kind of discover yourself. Um, so, I wondered what the kind of public reaction, well, the, not the public reaction, the Strictly voters' reaction sure. to you and John dancing together, what that meant to you? Okay. Sorry. That was a moment to behold. Um, and for me, and I'm sorry, it's about me, 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 me. And you've written a book about yourself. <laughs> we have to talk about you. you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but when it all kicked off, I was just like, okay, we'll probably be here for 
two weeks, three weeks. It's fine. It's fine. I made peace with that. That is why I'm saying I was never discovered. I've always, I've always been okay with the who I am in the world. Uh, it's just having to live out my dream like that or my, you know, a fantasy of mine like that. In fact, that for me was quite... But I was just like, because of our lived experiences, John, John included, we were just like, we, we just didn't see how we were ever going to progress to the final. I mean, we knew that there would be people that will look at all of this and go and feel seen and feel represented. Yeah. And I think that is what we both wanted, you know, after having to deal with the fact that we were both uncertain, I think, at some point of doing this. But it eventually landed in itself to say that we're just going to stick to, to we're just going to be true to our journey and we're going to make this about dancing yeah do you know and i think that was my that was my thing that i insisted on i was like if we're good enough they can't they can't deny us mm. you know yeah uh, and it has to work also because this is this is a big moment for my community for me for my family mm. you know because it opened up so much conversation you yeah. know, I mean, first thing I had to call mom and say, I'm, I'm dancing. I, I got my, because every year, you know, after we, we know who our partners, I think everybody calls their loved ones, you know, because you can't even talk about it. But I did. I found out that I was dancing with John and I had to call my mom because she was like, who are you dancing with? I said, John. And there was a silence. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I you, you know, what? I, I was just like, this is good. You know, it's like, John, I was like, yeah, it, it's a man. I was like, yeah, it's a man, mommy. You know, and, and yeah, I remember her saying to me, whatever you do, give this man the best experience. And I was just like, oh, Jesus. Has it been me all the time? Have I been standing in my way? Have I mm. built this idea that, you know, people have issues, whereas they don't, actually. You have made such a thing about it in your head. And I think that's when I just went, whoa. Yeah. And then we started having conversations. Like, my uncles were like, so what do you, what do you guys do? I mean, after th week three of doing that Pirates in the Caribbean, my uncle was like, so next week, what are you doing? You know, I'm like... My uncle is actually sitting down and watching Street and following Strictly Come Dancing. Yeah. Blew my mind. Yeah. Really, really blew my mind. So I have to say it was just the most beautiful thing to see how that moment went on to have an impact far and wide. Yeah. In the most beautiful way. Because everywhere I go, you know, people stop and say to you and John, thank you. And you must hear the stories, Holly. They are they are they're heartwarming, but they're big. Yeah. 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 I feel like there's going to be a mixture of people who feel so seen and a mixture of people who could then point their families to this. There's, and that is, exactly, that is exactly what happened. And so to bring you back round to that sparkly tailcoat, not that you were, you know, in drag yourself, but you choreographed Omri Paul's Drag Race. What was that like to be part of that show? I watched the show since its, in, it's since its inception in 2009. And I remember watching it back home in South Africa with a friend of mine who came back from the States. was like, you have to watch this. And I looked at it and I said, you guys to be kidding. This is not going to, this, there's not going to be a new, se uh, this is not going to be renewed. <laughs> this is the first and the last. People are not ready for all of this. And look, years later, I'm standing in front of RuPaul and Miss Overcharge. And there I might tell him the Queens five, six, seven, eight. I was I did that gig and I think I just I just didn't stop. I was just like, girl, girl, girl. It's okay. You can you can dream bigger. Yeah. You can, you can. There's nothing wrong with with just wanting more for your life and wishing for great things in your life. Yeah. 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 That was on you on Drag Race was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I was like, this is like the Strictly Drag Race crossover that I didn't know that my life needed, but it needed. <laughs> oh, it was just so good. Listen, you and so me good. both. It is, it is, it really is. And that was the thing, working with, 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 with those girls, I call them girls, um, 
it was also phenomenal. Walked away with having to have learned something. I mean, people are serious about their art form, isn't it? Yeah. And that is one thing that I walked away from thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And so you've written your life story down in this book. This is not the first time you've kind of delved into that. You've delved mm-hmm. into that with your live show. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. What was it like to then take that and narrate it into the audio book? What was that experience like? At the time when I was doing it, I was going through a very hard time, actually. And it was a bit strange, it's not a nice word, but, you know, to read your life out like that, you know, to read your life out loud. But that's the thing. I wouldn't want anybody else to do it. You no, know. it had to be you. It had to be. It had to be. I mean, other people don't, you know. <laughs> 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 but that is why it was just so important that I think I had to tell my story, you know, in my own voice. And I just, because that's also a thing, you know, but I feel like people will then get the gist of who Jojo is, yeah. you know. Yeah.